Hi and welcome back to Cheeky Crypto. Today guys we're going to be jumping down into the world of Luna Classic, taking a look at what's been going on most recently and what we think might actually happen next. As I get into this video, if you find it useful and informative, hit the like button. I do appreciate that. If you happen to be new to the channel, then why not go ahead and subscribe, tap the bell, select all the notifications, and in doing so you will be kept up to date with absolutely everything that we do here at Cheeky Crypto. Now if you have not yet joined us down in Discord, the link is in the description down below. It's a fantastic community talking crypto 24-7. It's completely free and I don't think you'll be disappointed by what you find down there. We actually cover a lot more down in the Discord server than we do on the YouTube or the Twitch channels, so well worth checking it out. And if you are looking for a little bit more from the crypto space, why not check out the Patreon services as well? We offer a lot more for our Patreon members via the Discord server. Everything from what myself and Chris are doing from buying, selling and staking through to project reviews, trading, AMAs twice weekly and a whole host of additional benefits. So if they do sound of interest to you, why not go ahead and check those out? OK, guys, let's make a start with this, though. There's Luna Classic paired up with BUSD. This is the one hourly chart and Binance is our data source. Following on from the last video that we did, we we're talking about this progression to the downside. We had our targets kind of set out there and we've been actually talking about these targets for quite some time. Now this was 24041. We actually went down a little bit lower on the one to one around the 22860. So let's go ahead and just zoom in on that for a second. OK, we're going to take a look right in here. So basically, we had this kind of uh, drop to the downside, this little bounce up here and then this pull here. OK, and this pull to the downside allows us to marry up what's going on. Right. We have this move here, this uh, this three wave structure. It starts like this one, two and three. Now, the interesting thing about these kind of structures is the way that they are formulated. So we can actually go ahead and look at this as a zigzag pattern right in here. OK, we have that. We then go up in three, so five down, three up. And then from here, we do another five down. We go one, two, three, four, and five. Okay. Now that basically there comes in just past that one to one ratio at two, two, eight, six, zero, and pretty much on our target. So we know that that's kind of done and we don't have to worry about it anymore. Okay. And we can also see down here uh, that this is basically our C wave low point. And we can also now go ahead and put all of these low points down here. Okay. Now, Obviously, this means that we adjust our targets to the upper side. OK, but my next up, upper, upper target range is going to be 46852. Um, and the way that we get this is we measure this distance here, this A wave distance. So we're going to go and put a fib on here. OK, we'll put a fib tool there. We then go ahead and move this over to that low that we just had. And you can see that up here we get to our range. OK, so it's basically the C wave being the same size as the A wave. OK, now you can be a little bit short of that. My minimum expectation on this would be that we'd at least go up to uh, the 372. Uh, yeah, yeah, basically, yeah, 37280. If I can get my words out today. Um, so right up here, right? And, you know, best case scenario is we come up here uh, and maybe even overextend it. OK, now all of that, though, in my opinion, if I zoom back out, is just a B wave move out of a large three wave correction, meaning that at some point we will come down to this one, four, one, seven, four. OK, now basically all of that is just a simple three wave correction. And then we can start talking about that actually might maybe being a part of a much bigger kind of play with this being an A wave, this being a B wave, and then we can move up into into what happens next. Right. And there's some pretty fantastic prices that could occur here. Now, I've said it before and I'll say it again. Luna Classic, uh, by all stretches of the imagination, considering the supply should definitely be only something you'd ever entertain from play money. Uh, this is not a serious um, coin for, for significant gains. It's going to fluctuate a lot. Uh, with so much supply, you're not going to see some silly, silly numbers, not unless, of course, we have significant uh, number of tokens burnt. Now, the 1.2% uh, tax is, is helpful. It kind of gets us a start in that right direction. Um, but I don't think, you know, this is something that's going to be a, a quick kind of flip. Now, there are some obvious things that we should obviously mention when it comes to this. Right. Um, we talk about, you know, Dogecoin and we talk about Shiba Inu being, you know, those typical kind of meme coins, the ones that appeal to a lot of, uh, you know, people on TikTok, for example, that really get that kind of speculative investment. They'll call out some crazy numbers and and basically people think they can invest $100 and they can become a multimillionaire, right? Um, so 
Why is this important? This is important because Luna Classic now has entered into that same kind of bucket. Okay, and uh, the differences really are that actually there's a lot more utility behind Luna Classic than there is that of, let's say, Dogecoin, for example. So um, what we want to con kind of consider here is that uh, essentially Luna Classic might actually be be adopted through some of those TikTok users. And, and if you start to get that kind of speculative investment from those kind of individuals where you have millions and millions of people um, jumping into it because A, it's cheap and people on TikTok are saying this is going to make you a multimillionaire, uh, you might actually see significant growth in the price. Now, this is all pure speculation. We don't know for sure. Um, from the technicals, we have an idea as to kind of what's going on. Elliott Wave Theory here is showing us a structure of how people are behaving with it. Um, but essentially, you know, we can think about if Luna Classic were to be adopted um, instead of something like Shiba Inu or instead of Dogecoin or instead of some other kind of meme coin, um, this could actually be very, very lucrative. OK, but again, I wouldn't really want to entertain this more than just play money in the space. I would look at this specifically as, you know, I've got a couple of hundred dollars. I don't mind you know, throwing it there to see what happens. Right. Um, but I wouldn't be you know thinking of this as a main uh, contender or main uh, contributor to my portfolio. Those will still be made up of other projects like Cardano, Zeta, Polkadot, Algorand, um, you know, Bitcoin, for example and uh, a few others um, but i wouldn't really be heavily focused on luna classic being a key part of my portfolio it would be more just play money and you know throw something at it if something happens fantastic if not i don't care too much right this is throwaway money that kind of thing and um, so with that being said you know there are some numbers that this thing could potentially go to in the future so we can't rule out those things as po uh, you know impossibilities now obviously with those kind of the understanding that the, the main kind of driver in price is going to be supply and demand and if the demand really increases and we're able to really shrink the supply down then this could be a catalyst for a really good run on Luna Classic. So I'm going to say it now uh, in this bear market there's still going to be some better prices to accumulate at but it's not FOMO into anything. Like I said it's going to be throwaway money anyway um, and you know essentially I do think that there's going to be a fantastic run later on uh, as kind of things really heat up. That being said a lot can happen between now and the next bull run where essentially we might not actually, uh, Luna Classic might not actually be in a position to have that kind of level of adoption or that level of demand coming in. Maybe another shitcoin comes along and really takes uh, takes that prize, right? So it's one of those, right? A lot of time can pass and a lot of things can change in this space. So keep a close eye on things. And um, for now, I'm not really investing in Luna Classic. I'm just going to kind of sit back, wait and see what happens over the next kind of month or so and see where the price goes. Um, but for now, it looks like a pretty interesting kind of structure uh, that's going on. I am expecting slightly lower, but before we can go lower, we of course have to go up higher. Okay, so I'm going to leave that video there and um, kind of a brief update on Luna Classic, what I'm thinking, where I think things are potentially going to go in the future. I can't rule out one cent or anything like that. Um, so it'll be one of those. And uh, if you have found this useful and informative, hit the like button. I do appreciate that. If you happen to be new to the channel, then why not go ahead and subscribe, tap the bell, select all the notifications. And in doing so, you will be kept up to date with absolutely everything that we do here at Cheeky Crypto. And don't forget to join us down in Discord. I'll be live on Twitch and to talk Bitcoin and Ethereum in about one hour after the video has gone live here. Um, so do join me over there as well, guys. Until the next one, have a fantastic day.